Happy Mother's Day to Mom, Grandma Mary, Grandma Jana, and, and to all moms. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. I am Pastor Tim Malik. I serve here at Calvary and Wilmer. Welcome to worship this fifth Sunday of Easter. I am joined in worship this morning by Pastor Dean Johnson, who will be our preacher, Pastor Naomi Mahler, who will be leading music along with our vicar David Sievertson, vocals and keyboard. I also want to take the time to thank uh, the people behind the scenes, our audio and visual uh, video techs uh, who have been, made this possible that we can bring you worship online. Uh, Chris Bennett, Mike Schroeder, um, Jason Holtgren, Gary Weifels, and Randy Novak. Thank you guys very much for helping us out uh, these weeks and learning new ways of doing technology that will help us into the future. Also, happy Mother's Day. Uh, to everyone celebrating this day. Uh, we know that during this time of safer at home, there is a real challenge for us to love our mothers and to love our neighbors by staying away, and that may be the hardest thing of all. So please be safe this Mother's Day. It may not be a buffet this Sunday, but we hope that you are able to connect and visit with one another. And we continue now with our Thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. 
Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched and you gave us water from the rock. When we, when we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness and grace and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We sing our opening hymn, Alleluia, Jesus is Risen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. 
Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now I'll turn it over to Pastor Dean for the children's message. Good morning, boys and girls. Typically, during the children's sermon, we would be up front of our sanctuary, but because of the situation and the COVID-19, we're not able to gather in front of the congregation for singing or for children's sermons or for praying. So I have some thoughts for you this morning to consider. This is Mother's Day, 2020. Mother's Day typically and historically is a day when more families eat in restaurants and cafes in the United States than any other day of the year. But I expect this year will be different. There will be takeouts and there will be cookouts at home and there will be small picnics perhaps. But it's a day we honor our mothers simply to say thank you, Mom, for your love, for your understanding, and all that you have done for us. Now, Mother's Day has an interesting historical perspective. It was started a long, long time ago by a woman by the name of Anna Jarvis, who lived in the state of West Virginia. West Virginia is way to the east of us. It's about a thousand miles away. It's like driving back and forth to Minneapolis five times. But Anna Jarvis, who had also done some work during the Civil War, placing flowers and tributes in the graves of the fallen soldiers. And during that time, she became friends with a number of women. And she realized that many of these women were dedicated to their sons and daughters and their grandchildren. And so she began a national movement to honor mothers. So in 1914, then President Woodrow Wilson asked the Congress of the United States to declare the second Sunday in May as Mother's Day. And that has withstood the test of time for almost over a hundred years. And so today we honor our mothers. Keep in mind, boys and girls, in the book of Jeremiah, it says, God knew us while we were still in our mother's womb. Think about that. Before we were even born, God knew who we were and our makeup. And he knew that we were precious in his sight. And so today we honor and thank our mothers, our grandmothers, and all who have cared for us for so many years. So to you boys and girls, thank you for listening and make sure sometime today that you give your mother and grandmother a hug and simply say, I love you. Thank you. Our psalm this morning comes from Psalm 31. I come to you, Lord, for protection. Never let me be defeated. You are a righteous God. Save me, I pray. Hear me. Save me now. Be my refuge to protect me, my defense to save me. You are my refuge and defense. Guide me and lead me as you have promised. Keep me safe from the trap that has been set for me. Shelter me from danger. I place myself in your care. You will save me, Lord. You are a faithful God. I am always in your care. Save me from my enemies, from those who persecute me. Look on your servant with kindness. Save me in your constant love. Here ends the reading. The second reading is found in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. Be like newborn babies, always thirsty for the pure spiritual milk, so that by drinking it you may grow up and be saved. As the scripture says, you have found out for yourselves how kind the Lord is. Come to the Lord, the living stone rejected by people as worthless, but chosen by God as valuable. Come as living stones and let yourselves be used in building the spiritual temple where you will serve as holy priests to offer spiritual and acceptable sacrifices to God through Jesus Christ. For the scripture says, I chose a valuable stone, which I am placing as the cornerstone in Zion. And whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. 
This stone is of great value for you that believe. But for those who do not believe, the stone which the builders rejected as worthless turned out to be the most important of all. And another scripture says, This is the stone that will make people stumble, the rock that will make them fall. They stumbled because they did not believe in the word. Such was God's will for them. But you are the chosen race, the king's priests, the holy nation, God's own people, chosen to proclaim the wonderful acts of God, who called you out of darkness into his own marvelous light. At one time, you were not God's people, but now you are God's people. At one time, you did not know God's mercy, but now you have received his mercy. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel for this fifth Sunday of Easter from John chapter 14. Do not be worried and upset, Jesus told the disciples. Believe in God, believe also in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house, and I am going to prepare a place for you. And I would not tell you this if it were not so. And after I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to myself, so that you will be where I am. You know the way, the way, you know the way that leads to the place where I am going? Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way to get there? Jesus answered him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one goes to the Father except by me. Now that you have known me, he said to them, you will know my Father also, and from now on you do, do not know him, and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, that is all we need. Jesus answered, For a long time I have been with you all, yet you do not know me. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Why then do you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe, Philip, that I am the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I have spoken to you, Jesus said to his disciples, Do not come from me. The Father who remains in me does his own work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. If not, believe because of the things I do. I am telling you the truth. Those who believe in me will do what I do. Yes, they will do even greater things because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father's glory will be shown through the Son. If you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends and hearers of the word of God, peace and grace to each of you this day. Amen. On the marquee outside of Calvary Lutheran Church on Olena Avenue, since Pastor Tim Malik came here, we have placed the title of the sermons out on the marquee for all to see as they drive by. And the title of the sermon this week is, Let Your Hearts Not Be Troubled, Nor Your Minds. And I am sure, as some folks have seen that title, they have said to themselves, they have muttered maybe to others in the car, yeah, sure, how can we not be troubled in the times in which we're living? Or as someone said to me when asked what the title of the sermon was, are you kidding me? You can't really be truthful about that. Let your hearts and your minds not be troubled. For most of us, we've never lived in a time like this, of quarantine, of isolation, of staying home, of not being told we can't be with our friends, of being told we can't have graduation receptions, we can't have graduation ceremonies. And when people hear that, parents and students, there is a note of anger that begins to build up. Why not? Why not? And quite honestly, the rules that have come forward from our government and the sayings 
I myself am kind of tired of hearing social engagement, flatten the curve, social distance, we are in this together. How many times have we heard that? Enough for us to turn off our TVs and our radios and try to go about our business in a normal like fashion. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. And yet in May of 2020, we know these are stressful, stressful times. The job loss, the economic indicators were announced today. Over 20 million people have lost their jobs in the last two months. It is equal to the Great Depression of 1929. 265 million people do not have enough to eat. Malnourished. 265 million. The investment portfolios of those that are able to gain some money and save it for later have easily diminished by 30%, if not more. And as many of my friends say to me, you know, what are we going to do? There's no sports on TV. There's no golf, no baseball, nothing to watch on TV. In fact, one of my friends said, I'm watching old replays of Gunsmoke, The Three Stooges, and Hogan's Heroes. And family and friends are struggling. Those who have loved ones in hospitals, in nursing homes, long-term long -term care facilities. Their only communication is to talk to the nurses and occasionally to the doctors. Occasionally they're able to get up to the window and see their loved one who may be coming to life's end. It's a troubling time troubling story, a troubling place. And yet we hear the gospel on the fifth Sunday of Easter, let not your hearts and minds be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. So how do we segue from May of 2020 to the scripture passages that Jesus proclaimed to his disciples on the night before he was to die? Some folks would say, well, that was then. This is now. But the words still are true. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. You see, Jesus had completed his work on earth, his 33 years of teaching and preaching and healing. He knew it, and he knew what was to come, his suffering, his death, and his resurrection. And he was trying to encourage his disciples, his followers. And even they had questions. Thomas had questions, Philip had questions, and they were distressed. It's interesting that Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. I inserted, and your mind, but Jesus said, your heart. You see, when we receive messages, we receive communications, good, bad, or indifferent, yes, we hear it, we think about it, but it strikes right here. For it's our heart that brings life to us. It's blood that brings oxygen to us. The ability to think, it's our heart that gives us the ability to feel. And Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. So in this farewell discourse, if you will, kind of Jesus' summation of his life, as he told his disciples what was going to happen and where he was going to go and the fact he was going to come back, what did he say to his disciples? First of all, he encouraged them and told them, even though he was going to be physically gone, even though he was going to die, there was not going to be a separation. Spiritually, they would be connected. One of the things we have observed during this time of COVID-19 is separation. 
separation from family, separation from neighbors, separation from classmates, separation from the usual and customary things that we do, and it brings about into our life a sense of grief. I've often referred to times of separation at airports. You've all brought loved ones to an airport. They've gone for a trip, travel, business, pleasure, whatever. And as you and I have dropped them off at the curb at the airport, and in days before hugging was not healthy, we'd give them a hug or a handshake. And as they walked away, you can feel that separation. You feel it here. Jesus said to his disciples, even though you're not going to see me for a while, there is not a separation. Why? Because I'm going to prepare a place for you. Now, typically when we hear that, we think it must be some geographic place. It must be some place big and stellar. But what Jesus is talking about here is I'm going to prepare a place for you, and it's going to be a place of relationship. a place of eternal relationship that you and all of God's believers and his children will be with me in the presence of God in this relationship. He told his disciples, you will have access to the Father by me. I want you to think about that for a second. Many people say this, and they mean, well, I believe in God. That's great. But the truth of the matter is, in Christianity, we believe in God through Jesus Christ. It's Jesus who gives us access to God. It's Jesus the Christ who shows us the way. It's Jesus the Christ who has gone before us on our behalf, who suffered and died. Yes, as Jesus was standing before his disciples talking, they also, if you will, saw God. They saw God. And when we hear and the activities of Jesus, we too see God. Jesus said to his disciples, you will have knowledge of me. That's interesting, knowledge. You will have an understanding of my ways and what I have done. For we as God's people and Christians to have knowledge of God, one of the things I'm sure, and I've heard it over the years, I have questions of God. I have some questions that I'd like to ask God. I'm sure there are parents who have lost loved ones, especially children, through accidents, illness, and disease, would like to ask God why did you allow this to happen? Why? We as pastors don't know the answer. But we have questions of God. We have questions of God this very moment, this very day. Why have you allowed this virus to attack the peoples of the world? Why have you allowed the wars to take place? Why have you allowed other epidemics to have taken place? Why do you allow starvation? Questions of God. But Jesus kept saying, do not lose heart. Do not lose heart. Believe in God. Believe also in me. For he told his disciples, I'm going to the Father. And we know in just a few, a few days will be Ascension Day where Jesus would stand the risen Lord midst his followers and he ascended into heaven to be with his heavenly Father. But he said, I'll return. Don't fall asleep. Don't get lazy. I'm coming back. But in the meantime, do good works. Do good things. Love one another. And one cannot help but see all the good works that are going on 
in our community, in our state, and nation at the present time. Whatever your prayer life is and mine, one of the things I think we offer our prayers for are the people, the health care workers, who are working in nursing homes and long-term care facilities, in hospitals and clinics. Each and every day, they are going into a dangerous situation. They are doing it when interviewed out of love and commitment, out of calling. They are doing the Lord's work. They are doing what God would want them to do. So let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. Every human being, every human being has times that we feel down and out. Maybe more so now than under ordinary conditions in our country, in our state. But there are times you just feel down and out and depressed and say, is this ever going to end? Are we going to get back to normal? Yes, one day we will. I'm often reminded of the Negro spiritual. All my troubles, Lord, will soon be over. And that had to do with the crossing of the river of the slaves when they went from slavery, crossed the river into freedom, and they sang, heartfelt, all my troubles will soon be over. I'll be free. Yes, one day all this will be over. So let us not lose heart. Today is Mother's Day, as Pastor Tim alluded to, as we alluded to in our children's sermon. And Mother's Day has a very interesting history going back to the early 1900s by a woman named Anna Jarvis from West Virginia who had done good work during the Civil War with other women, acknowledging men and women who had died by placing flowers on graves. At the turn of the century, because she was impressed impressed by the good works and love of many women, she wanted to acknowledge the good works by having a day set aside called Mother's Day. And so she began a campaign in 1914 Woodrow Wilson, the President of the United States, declared the second Sunday of May to be Mother's Day, which exists today. It's a time to appreciate our mothers and our grandmothers for all they have done. And as I think about mothers, and mothers have struggles like fathers, like children, but I think about mothers caring, compassionate, forgiving, understanding, all those qualities that Jesus wanted us to have as human beings. There is an attachment that mothers have to their children that is second to none. If I may, let me pay a special note to my own mother. None of you met my mother. My own mother died in 1985 after a three-year battle with ovarian cancer at the age of 69. As we say, she did not wear her religion on her sleeve, but she was a very devotional person. Two or three times a day, quietly in that farmhouse, I know she would read the Bible, and she would pray for her husband and her two sons and other members of the family, members of the congregation community, but she never boasted about it. But my mother had her struggles with her youngest son. That was me. When I was seven years old and my brother was 12, my mom and dad decided on this beautiful summer day 
to travel to Lanesboro to pick up some groceries and supplies, and my older brother said to me, let's have some fun. Let's get in Grandpa's old car and go up into the pig pen and drive around. Sounds good to me. And so we were spinning around in the pig pen and the manure, and I fell out of the car. My brother ran over me. Later on, I was determined I'd punctured a lung and broken ribs. About that time, my mom and dad came home from town, and my dad ran up. He picked me up literally out of the manure, brought me down to the lawn, began to wash me off. I was gasping for my breath. I can tell you the spot today where I was fighting for my life. My own mother prayed over me. I remember looking in her eyes. She said, Lord, if you allow my son to live, I'll rededicate him to your service. My dad picked me up. He put me in the 1951 Mercury And I remember him saying, we're going 80 miles an hour to Lanesboro, nine miles away, to Dr. Ralph Johnson, who was our family physician. I don't all remember what happened. They put me in the hospital, and I survived. But years seven and eight of my life were tough. We were at a family reunion in Lanesboro with my cousins, and my cousin pushed me on the merry-go-round, and I stuck my head up. And there were 21 stitches in my head. Got through that. My brother and I were home. We were fighting in the barn. He pushed me, and I stuck a nail through my foot and became very ill. But during all this, I remember my mother praying. Just like your mother's. All situations, you keep praying. You keep praying. And so fast forward to June of 1973, First Lutheran Church of Highland, the day of my ordination. My mom and dad sat in the front row. Pastor Albert Rognes, president of Luther Seminary, was our ordination speaker. Pastor Floyd Lane, who served here, also was there for the ordination. And as customary in that congregation, when a son or daughter was ordained, the mother would take a cross and put up on the banner. And I was the 12th cross to put up, be put up by my mother in honor of that day. And she turned around and she gave me a hug. She said, my prayer has been answered. My prayer has been answered. I tell you that story, not because to embellish my own mother, you have those stories. Your mother has shown kindness and forgiveness and compassion, tried to make peace, all of those things. That's what our Lord wants us to do. Even in these difficult times. It's difficult times of isolation, of quarantine to be understanding, encouraging one another. Our mothers are great examples of what Jesus wants us to be like on this Mother's Day of 2020. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. And I'm going to come again and take you on to myself. But while I am gone... Do good things. Love one another. Be kind. Be gentle. Be encouraging. Pray for one another. Despite all the social, cultural pressures we have, the stresses of the daily situation, 
Think about Jesus when he spoke to his disciples, knowing full well he was heading for suffering and death. And he was able to say to his followers, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. For I'm going away after a while, but I'm coming back. May God bless us during these difficult times. And remember this, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Amen. Having heard God's word proclaimed, we respond by confessing our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. For those of you that have someone to share your home with, please share the peace. For those that are home by yourself, I will send you a virtual hug of peace. And now, following the peace, we would have an offering here at church. So we invite you to continue to support the ministry of Calvary Lutheran Church uh, with prayer, with your good thoughts, with your charitable actions. But also, you can give financially to support this important ministry 
electronically. You can visit our website. Uh, you can mail it in to our post office, uh, or through the post office, I should say, to our address, our street address, which is on the slide, or drop it off in a locked drop box in the front of our building. Thank you for your ongoing support of all these important ministries here at Calvary Lutheran Church. And now I'm pleased to share with you some special music sung by Jessica Skindelin. Come, I way, my truth, my life, such a way as gives us breath, such a truth as ends all strife, such a life as gives death. Come, my love. Such a night as shows a feast, such a feast as men's in length, such a strength as makes his guest. Come, my joy. Now I offer to you a prayer. Thank you again for supporting with your gifts the ministry of the church. And now an offering prayer. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all time and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Build us up, mothering God, as living stones united in your spiritual house. Continually strengthen your church as it is sent forth to proclaim your love. We pray especially for new congregations, those churches in redevelopment, and those churches struggling to survive the coronavirus pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, humble us, creator God, as part of your creation. Fill us with respect and awe for the world you have made, including volcanoes, ocean currents, tropical rainstorms, glaciers, and other forces that both destroy and create. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Align our ways to your love, O God. Grant us your spirit of love and your spirit of self-discipline so that we may come together working to control and eliminate the coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of healing and rest, come to our aid as the coronavirus spreads globally. Heal those who are sick. Support and protect their family and friends from being, protect families and their friends from being infected. Grant your healing to all those in need. Comfort their suffering, ease their distress, and carry their burdens. And we pray for all those in need of your healing touch, including those who are hospitalized, 
Roger Baker. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, we pray for those who tend and teach young children, for the safe pregnancies of expectant parents, and for families who struggle with infertility and miscarriage. We give thanks for all who have shown mothering care. And we remember all for whom this day is difficult. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, sustain all workers and business owners who suffer loss of livelihood due to shutdowns and quarantines. Protect and guard all those who must travel and work. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Generous God, hold in your gentle embrace all who have died and who will die this day. Comfort their loved ones in their despair. Give us faith to take hold of the promise of your eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Just a few announcements. Again, thank you for being with us this uh, Easter season of Easter Sunday worship. We're so glad that you can be with us. There are many ways to find offerings from Calvary Lutheran on Facebook and social media. And uh, thank you to Amber Willis for helping facilitate so much of that. We have devotions that go on there. People have special music offerings. Uh, please take time to check all that out. Again, happy Mother's Day. Um, I do want to take a serious turn here. Your staff here at Calvary, the other pastors and our vicar David and myself, have been attending a lot of conferences this week held online with medical providers, with county emergency personnel, with state epidemiologists. And I want to tell you that we're in the middle of a very serious situation. These people have been asking your staff, your pastors, as well as pastors and other churches here in the community to be leaders and asking you to stay safe and stay home. We know this is hard. The weather's getting nice. There are opportunities to support our local businesses, but it's so important that you stay home. As of four o'clock Thursday, Candy Ohio has 261 active cases, and we'll be doubling, the state at least, is doubling new cases every eight days. We have yet to see the peak of this, and we're taking all this very seriously here at Calvary. We're continuing to monitor the situations, but I implore you, please stay safe and stay, stay home as much as you possibly can. We still believe in the resurrection, and Pastor Dean did an excellent job in proclaiming that and the love and care that we can have for one another even during these difficult times. So I'd like to bestow upon you now a blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. And in the midst of this coronavirus, we're still going to let our light shine. And we're going to sing this little light of mine.
just as he said remain in peace share the good news alleluia thanks be to god alleluia <laughs>